bands, ladies and gentlemen. Hecarim does get banned out. And you know, these bands, these teams actually do know each other a lot because WE and IG have made appearances in the Korean leagues. The Korean teams have also made appearances in the mixed leagues. There's a number of mixed leagues that have happened. Even the Stars Wars season. League, they the played a lot against each other in that. Stars Wars was a two where we actually saw yeah. it was IG and WE in the final. So in that league, they came out on top. Well, we will see which way this one swings. Hecarim and Javan are the bands, kind of standard. The heavy jungler bands as well. And surprise, surprise, Rumble is taken out of there. Cannon actually removed from Ambition. And the luxury, actually, that the LPL team, the Chinese team has, is that they were thinking that they were most likely facing the Korean team. They will have spent the entire time scouting and only preparing for one opponent. Whereas if Korea wanted to prepare for this, they would have had to essentially look past North America. And we're not sure if they did that. But because Cannon was so effective in the last few games, Chris, China's just been sitting back and watching. Well, Kazix has been banned out. We did see PDD going pretty wild on Kazix oh, against yeah. uh, the Garena All Stars. And Rise is taken away from Shy, but it does mean that the 100% ban in Korea has pretty much got through untouched. And it looks like Twisted Fate may well get selected. And that was actually a pretty big cheer considering it's not Messiah playing yeah. Twisted Fate if they end up going for this. They just love seeing him. Twisted Fate in the game. Sometimes it's a rare occurrence. I know in the OGN Champions League, he was 100% pick ban. He was not 100% pick ban. The LPL is much down towards 70 or so, which tells me that China has something ready to counter it because it's not 100% feared there. Well, we do see them getting locked in. There is PDD on your screens. It looks like Zach is going to be the champion of choice, along with Caitlyn. We saw Wei Zhao and Caitlyn against the Green All Stars. It was pretty good. And both of these guys, Prey and Wei Zhao, have played ridiculously strong Caitlyn's in some of these games. The lane control that it's going to offer in this matchup, specifically if they want to get control, that is China, to be able to dive in is so important. Well, look at that. It's going to be Mad Life on Thresh. That's what I like to see. Mad Life will be on Thresh. And of course, the other choice was Jace, which I'm guessing will be shy in the top lane. Is pretty much where he's going to go. We have seen an AD carry Jace, but I don't think it's going to be the sun round. That's got to be a top lane. Yeah, he was so good at Jace near the end of this, the season, as they're still not even over with the season, but so good at Jace right now that they're banning it out in almost every game that he plays in. It's just since it's an all-star team, and since they hadn't been using it recently, China decided to go with other bands, but that Jace is going to be a really difficult opponent for whatever LPL decides to lane against it, whether it's a 2v1 or whether it's just a top lane matchup. Well, Diana looks like it might get selected. Actually has been on the losing side in quite a few of these matches lately, but has really been a favorite choice here in China, as well as Korea, and I guess the North American and European scenes. And specifically for China, it will really help them keep the enemy team together. They're going to try to combo in with Zach and Diana for these team fights to really just keep them. We saw that 3v5 five-man kill yeah. yesterday, and that was really in large part because Diana kept them there. So for the type of play that China likes to do, Diana really fits. It just, the low percentage was mainly because North America was playing it against what the two teams in the finals. And that's that's a champion I like to see. It is Lee Sin getting locked in. Insects like, yep. I mean, that one didn't get to play it against North America. He was ridiculous on it. No, he did get. He did. He played. He played against Europe. Europe. Getting my games yeah. mixed up. That is awesome. Uh, it was. I mean, we saw the, the Q land. It was like, zip, zip, zip. The stranger, like, kick Pete, poor, poor Pete, straight into the turret. He killed and, like, the Prox. waiting five man spider jumping on him. And he killed Darren Prox with it earlier. Yes, of course. So he's 3 0, actually, on Lee Sin. <laughs> if we count the 1v1 game. That's a little harsh against Europe. <laughs> what are you. Let's talk about Lee Sin. Well, technically, Lee Sin, but it is all against Europe. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be harsh, you could say North America is the only team that didn't win a 1v1 or the tournament. Oh, that's that's kind of true. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a little harsh, but we do see, actually, the AD carry getting locked in, and it is Tristana. That's the champion we've not seen in a while, but we see Nocturne locked in as the jungler for China. And this is really awesome to me, because when you pick a champion like Tristana, you're signaling, I want to be the late game hyper carry, especially when they're trying to combo with Jace, who also scales ridiculously well. Then when they pick Nocturne on top of that, Nocturne is a champion who peaks out really early and dives super hard. So I feel like China is going to be going all out aggression and trying to stop Korea from getting late game composition. I love games like this. So what do we think? Early game pressure. Which way is it going to come from? Because clearly Korea, with the Tristana in there, they want to get a little bit later. But with Twisted Fate, they're going to be making moves in the lanes. Yeah, so I think LPL is going to be attempting to put all the pressure on them. They are the ones that have the initiative too. But it's going to be on Insect to try to stop that. What 
Korea has done with this team comp is they have a bunch of late game champions with the early game power of Lee Sin to try to negate that. And then when they hit six, they're going to try to get through the mid game with Twisted Fate. So they have two stop gaps to try to stop China from coming through, and it's going to be about whether they can hold. And you've got that potential, of course, obviously with the paranoia now. Just just saw Diana had selected teleport as well, so Missile's going to have the teleport available. So they could all potentially clump onto one spot at the same time. And that's something they have to be very concerned about if it's the area of effect composition coming in from China. We see what happens when teams all clump up against them. Absolutely. So, well, guys, we are excited. It is the Grand Finals here, the All-Star Grand Finals in a pretty much a packed house, it has to be oh, said. Man. No doubt about it. There is lights, neon lights everywhere, neon signs that get shown all across. So you can see it's got LOL. There's a number of WE and IG signs as well, certainly in the top right-hand corner, but we are about to get underway. Here it is. It is the Chinese LCL team, L Korean LCL team on the blue team. LCL and LPL, guys, I'm going to get it's confused. It's not going to get confusing, well as, don't yeah, worry. Not at all, not at all. But it is the Korean LCL team, the Le League of Legends Champion League. Whew, that's a mouthful to versus say right there. the League there. of Legends Pro League. Pro League. <laughs> it's the All-Stars, China versus Korea. You guys all know at home what it's going to be. And the red team looking like they may well go walking straight headlong into Shia. Will he face check that bush? Oh, this man. could be a very dangerous move, Jack. And we were wondering if there was going to be some level in action. Shia and Madlife trying to go! They're going straight in for it. That's going to be the build over onto Madlife, but the acceleration gate had to be picked as the first skill for Shy. That may well actually hamper him when he goes into lane phase. Only a little bit. I've seen so many Jaces start the game with the gate just for that level one positioning, and since he's ranged, he can quite easily play passively up until that level two. But because China got the harass down on both on both Mad Life and Shy, they're going to be able to take some positioning here in the blue buff. Well, we'll see whether China stick around or whether they're going to back off. They're actually backing off in the bush, but that's quite clever because they know there's the ward on there, and it's actually going to keep Korea guessing. They've all gone back. And we talked about the Korean mind games that happened against North America just now. That was a great Chinese mind game right there because now Korea's got to be extremely careful about where they go well, on top of wards. We're looking at Insect, and he's thinking... Looked like he was thinking of going towards blue, but they've actually hung around and... Are oh, they going to check it? Look at that. They're still pinging it. They're still unsure. They still don't know whether to go in. Even though they're unsure, the only thing that's going to be a detriment to them is if they actually avoid the buff entirely because China's not making any aggressive moves off here. The biggest benefit is actually going to be... Never mind. There is something big happening because they're doing a delayed invade. They may have guessed wrong. They've guessed wrong and they're going to walk around the corner and they've got, oh, China right here. Hold on a minute. You guys are meant to be on our buff. And now it might well be a smite fight. Who's going to get it? It is going to be Insect. Can he get away? He gets the exhaust down, but Misai is going to come around the backside. Will they go towards him or will he be prey? He pops the barrier and the flash and it looks like they've hit and run successfully. Ambition comes down, puts the slow card on Messiah, and all of Korea back away from that on a great invade. Really dangerous invade, a little bit touchy, but it definitely will pay off for them. The fact that Insect was able to take that away from Troll will mute their early game power right now. We knew Insect was the stopgap to try to let their lane survive, and that is a fantastic start, not only denying the mana, but the early game pressure from Troll experience-wise. Wow, so what a start here. The blue buff, of course, is up in Insect's jungle, and he is heading straight for it. Not surprised there. That may well hinder Troll quite severely here. You can see he's trying to take down the red buff now. Had to go for the alternative. This, of course, still got Smite available because he didn't win out that Smite fight. Didn't want to use it earlier on. Looks like he will pick up that red buff. And this also confirms that Korea is getting three buffs to just the one. A lot of times when we've seen the invade buff steals, they just trade. But because it wasn't a trade, it was actually a contest. It's a one for zero, not a one for one trade. And it does, of course, mean that actually the lanes didn't gain any advantage from this one. Shy maybe did because he was up there early because he's at level two before PDD in this top lane. And what do we think of this one? The, the Jace versus uh, Zach. Zach's going to have to really survive, I feel like. Shy is such, I mean, Jace in general is such a potent laner, but Shy in particular because Shy wins lanes with champions he shouldn't win lanes with. It's crazy what he does when he has a champion who should win lane. So he already pushed up, plus he knows that Troll is set back early. The only thing he has to worry about, actually, is Messiah maybe teleporting in behind him. Because I feel like Shy is going to be pushed up as far as possible on Jack for a real long time. 
speaking of problems right down in that bottom lane, they both just hit level three, and Prey was still, he's still at level one. Both of them are level three, he's still level one, only just hit two now. And this is actually surely a factor because they went for that blue invade, but they didn't take those golems in the bottom lane. And another one of the side effects of the blue invade was the fact that he lost his flash and his barrier in that little trade. So we thought it was a huge advantage for Insect, but I didn't have time to factor in all the summoner spell usages. I feel like Korea burned more getting away than China burned chasing. Well, we'll see whether Insect can gain an advantage back for his team. He has just picked up that red buff, looking like he may well try and come visiting in this bottom lane. Does have to back off, though. The board does get pinged out, and I think he sensed the play of Wei Zhao and Zhao Zhao just kind of staying a little bit back as he was coming through. Well, he is a blind monk. You know, he's going to sense these sense things, it. as we've seen, of course, against Teemo. <laughs> but as it stands, it is the mid lane. We just saw Miss Sire actually coming back, teleporting back in towards that mid lane, but it's going to be the bottom lane where they dive in on towards Wei Zhao. They do manage to get the kick. There's going to be the jump. Forces the flash away oh, from man. Wei Zhao. The hook comes out from Mad Life. Doesn't quite find the hole, and they escape successfully. That was extremely close to working and getting Wei Zhao down, but he waited just the right moments to use both his flash and his 90 caliber net to get away. Really, the execution power of that gank was so high, and I do think it was still a good gank despite not getting a kill. Xiao Zhao very low in that bottom lane. We did see actually looking in towards the jungle, you can see Troll. He's come around and he's counter jungle. He realized that Inkset was down that bottom lane. He's come straight around, taking the walls out there. Let's see whether he can gain any more advantages because it is Korea pushing on this bottom turret. And what he needs to do now, that is Troll, is he has to go into a lane and actually shove. Taking one jungle camp away does not negate this pressure that Korea has on the bottom lane. And it is going to be pressure. We do see it's going to be Wei Zhao returning to lane. I'm not too sure he wants to get too close to this turret. No, he doesn't because in Korea have taken it. They've got enough of a creep wave there to take the turret inside six minutes. So a very quick turret there for Korea. That will give them a little bit of bolster bolstering in the lanes when they decide to go back and get the shop trip on. It will also give them a chance to maybe shut down Diana a little bit, who honestly Ambition won't be able to do. Now Ambition has even more freedom roaming the map since there is no turret protecting Wei Zhao farming. If China wants to actually shut down Wei Zhao a little bit, which is nearly impossible in most games on Caitlyn Farm, because he's farming in that empty turret, Ambition might have a chance to. Well, we do hear Ambition using the taunt there on Miss Sire. Wow, this seems like a bit of a grudge match in the mid lane. Using the get real kit, I think it was, on towards Miss Sire as he pulls out that stun card, gets level six. And actually, we haven't really had a chance to talk about these mid laners, how they've been doing against each other. You can see 42 to 46 CS, very close between them. Both have just hit their ultimates, and actually both have gone for very similar builds. And the Double Doran's Ring is more common on Twisted Fate against a Diana because he needs a little bit of resiliency just to make sure the jump on doesn't instantly kill him. The Double Doran's on Diana is a little bit more curious since he went for the Crystalline Flask as well. Usually you'll see Double Doran's in top lane, but Diana might go a little quicker for either just straight up magic resist or whole bunch of ability power. On this top lane is PDD under a little bit of pressure there. You can see the tier of the goddess was picked up early on by Shy, so he's gonna start stacking that out. You can see he's clearly winning the CS battle, as you would expect. Jason gonna be able to clear those waves out very quickly. PDD really had to go with simple defensive, but uh oh, there's gonna be two members coming up there. We do see in second Shy, but it's quite clearly visible. And actually Mad Life forces the flash in mid lane, but I want to get back to this top lane matchup because Shy has spent this entire game Puts to PDD's turret, and it's really showing in the way that PDD hasn't been able to roam around. 20 minion kills already, and just now Troll is starting to come up top, but because of the way Insects outstole the blue buff at the start of the game here, Troll still is at level 6, so Shy, for a little while longer, can still feel safe keeping this far up. Now I want to look at what's developing in this bottom lane. There's a big CS advantage starting to build here. 38 CS for Prey and 54 for Wei Zhao. Is your answer. going in? It's going to be Twisty Fate. It's going to be Wei Zhao's the target. There's no turret to fall back on. That's going to be the flash kill. He jumps on towards Zhao. Zhao gets the slowdown and the stun card. That will be two kills. It will be Korea that takes it. Ambition picks up the second. And that was exactly the moment where Ambition wanted to go down. That has set up, been set up for a while since they'd taken the turret earlier. We knew that Wei Zhao was going to be a little bit unsafe in that lane, but he was continually pushing up because he was trying to punish Prey's early game on Tristana. That's why Korea punished. That is the reactionary play that we lauded Korea so much for. They might get a dragon as well. They may well take a big advantage here. That's going to stretch their gold lead to around about 3,000 gold. Just coming up to eight and a half minutes in this game. That is a sizable portion of gold already this early on. Really, really huge lead. 3,000, eight minutes in, considering how dominant China looked 
impact in some of their games, but Korea, as we said, has been the most dominant team throughout this one. They've really punched China in the face really early on here, and China really will have to, I'm saying really a lot, have to come back here. <laughs> well, it really, really is a problem for them because the, if there's any way in any sport to silence the home crowd, it's to put their team on the back foot very early on, and that is exactly what you're doing right now. The Koreans are in a dominant position. Can they continue to hold it, though? We've seen teams Certainly going up against China before. North America comes straight to mind in game two. But it's actually Paranoia that's popped. They're diving on towards Shai in the top lane. This could be the first kill for China. Shai does flash away from this one. Will he be able to escape Troll? Surely will be able to land that Q in He's just a down. moment. He's going to be dead, you feel. There it is. That's going to be Troll picking up the first kill for China. And Troll's really going to have to make that kill count because that was the first time he's impacted the game in nine and a half minutes. Shy had been punishing PDD this entire time, and that was the very first time that he got punished for that. Troll will have to wait a while on his next ultimate cooldown, but if he doesn't make that kill count, it might not be worthwhile. So I feel that PDD is saving up, maybe wants to get that Giant's Belt in there, but meanwhile you see Shy, he's going aggressive already. He's got that Brutalizer, the Tyrion Goddess has been stacking for a good few minutes already, and that Longsword to go with it. He is going to be a problem right now. And it's because of the extremely strong leading phase of Jace, plus the shutdown that happened on Troll early on in the game. So Shy, not sure if he's just going to continue to lane against PDD and try to press that advantage, or whether he's going to press mid a little bit to allow Ambition to roam around more. Well, let's take a look at the AD carries. Look at Prey. He is rushing that Infinity Edge. He's already got the BF Sword and the Pickaxe comparison to just Berserker Griefs and Double Longsword. In terms of damage, that is a huge difference. And it's a really good thing that his team has been getting him kills that China has a turret and that China has a dragon because 48 mini kills on Tristana, 10 and a half minutes into the game, is abysmally low. Wei Zhao and Zhao Zhao have been doing such a great job shutting down his CS in that lane, but he's been getting it back in other ways, so that's why the damage is actually that high for him. We'll see whether that is able to sustain as this game goes on. Insect picks up the red buff, and we do we'll see, see Troll going around, looking at maybe trying to set something up. We've got the AD carry and supports of Mad Life and Wei, uh, sorry, not Mad Life and Wei Zhao, dream team right there. Zhao Zhao and Wei Zhao, which is another dream team. Another dream Certainly team. China's dream team have moved into this mid lane. They're now up against Ambition. And this may be trying to stop Ambition's roam here, but it was just the one twisted fake gank on Wei Zhao. Maybe they're trying to make sure Wei Zhao can't get ganked by TF by just staying next to him and not having to worry about it. Have to wait to see how that one plays out. Yeah, it does, of course, give free roam for the uh, bottom lane. Prey is going to get some of that free farm. Nobody anywhere near him right now, so he could just keep on shoving. He's got good ward coverage. We do see three members of the Korean All-Stars moving in towards his mid lane. Madlife joining Ambition, and that is going to be Insect just bouncing around, safeguarding around those wards. And something that's quite underrated about the Lee Sin jungle when you go Sightstone is the immense amount of just random ward coverage you're able to create. Since he can use it for combat effectiveness, the Sightstone, the Lee Sin really just has the gank power as well as the map control, which may allow Shy to continue to push up since they have double the Sightstone of a normal team. Well, look at PDD's build. He did go for that giant spell, but he also went for a second cloth armor. So he's stacking up really in a mixed match of what to build, whereas Shy, he has full control of that lane, it seems. But the CS difference is not that great because Zach is quite happy just literally absorbing it on the tower. But the big difference is Shy hasn't had to build any reactive items. If Twisted Fate goes up and ganks PDD, he will be completely vulnerable to that magic damage. That's the reason, you know, even though he's absorbing it, it's the build that's going to cost him later. Paranoia comes out, but Insect is right there. This China going to dive on. They may well be able to get the damage down in time, but here comes Ambition to join the party. He's going to come in, gets the stun card on PDD. Shy gets away with absolutely nothing, and that is going to be the passive proc. But Prey and Messiah going at it as well. It's going to be Messiah that picks up the kill for China, but it's Korea that comes out on top with the double kill in the top lane. Big time reactionary play right there. You have to say they sniffed out the troll gank from Nocturne and Twisted Fate ran into position to stop it. They drew out the fight long enough that he was able to get out there. And then in the bottom lane, Prey actually thought all the action was happening up top. He forgot that Messiah may actually be roaming down to hunt him, ends up getting a kill for himself as well. So Messiah may well put some pressure on this turret. They've got a double wave with him. So he may be able to take this one down. Mad Life and Ambition back in this mid lane, of course. Wei Zhao and Zhao Zhao keeping that pressure going. There is a CS advantage still building between the AD carries. It is 
around about 33 minions right now. And it's a prey that's definitely falling behind. That's going to be Messiah taking the turret down on the bottom. Well, Willy, will Madlife come in in time? No, he won't. And now Madlife may be in trouble. Gets the flight just at the right time for Messiah. Is he, he really throws out. This? He does look like it is. <laughs> that's going to be Prey taking the dark passage. Will he be able to jump on towards Messiah's head? The rocket jump is available. Really? He does go for it. And now you can see it's actually China that are getting ready for this one. We have Troll coming down. He doesn't have his ultimate available. That's going to be a kill. And it's Messiah that goes down. But now Prey Mal will maybe target. Shai's going to come down. It's a 3v2 for Korea here. They're turning around. Wei Xiao getting massacred there. Absolutely knocked him back. Flashes away from Mad Life's hook. That was amazing judgment there by the Korean team to know to go in because it seemed like a very foolish endeavor trying to chase down a Diana that far away since he had just killed Prey previously. And you think there'd be a bit of fear still in him, especially considering the length of the chase. The fear of a collapse coming in from China is really high, but they judged it right, got out with the kill, and now they're up 5-2. to two. When they just judged it, because, I mean, e even looking across the board, that they all had the boots, that anyone that was likely to get remotely close to that fight, the boots were there, but it is Korea that are continuing to shove on the mid lane now. They may well be able to take the turret. They did get the blue buff a moment ago. It's Madlife that lands the hook, but PDD comes in. He gets less bounce going. Madlife does get the shield out. He will go down. Troll flashes away from this one. Now could they turn it on towards Insect? We do see in the top lane where his ambition going. He's just going to back off, as are the rest of the Korean team. It's now 5-3 in kills. PDD really trying to make an impact now. He's out of the laning phase against Shy because his turret has fallen, and we may see more plays like that. Let's Bounce is not on an extremely long cooldown, and he can fly all over the place without a last excellent shot. So we'll see how China do react. They've put clumped together into a four-man team right now. We do see Troll off the distance. He has got Paranoia available as well. And of course, it looks like China will split out. They need to start trying to put some pressure on the tourists. We see Korea. They already have two turrets. That middle turret is very, very low as well. So that's almost certainly going to be the place where Korea starts to put the next pressure. And this could be a bit of a breaking point for the LPL squad if they can't turn something around quickly, because we know with the Tristana pick and the Jace pick, once that Muramana transforms and once Tristana gets two or three items under her belt, the game is going going to get much, much darker for China. But they're losing this hit. They're losing it now. They're, they're losing it now because Messiah just got absolutely destroyed. Shy and Insect, they seem to be roaming and working very well together. Very mobile champions and Dragon now is the target for Korea. And they are going to try to burst this down as quickly as possible. They cleared the pink ward to block the Messiah teleport if they were to come in in about 18 seconds when he reses up. A great dragon after kill, but they're trying to turn on ambition. They put the paranoia down, but the stun card came straight out, and he's trolled and may well get taken down. Yes, he is. They're going to be the dark passage. They pull ambition away, and he walks away with a kill. It might not be the last, though, because PDD is the next target. Wei Zhao also gets focused. There's a exhaust down on Shy there, but PDD, it's Insect that's jumping towards him, doesn't like right land the queue. PDD it. They're on to Shy. They get Shy. It's a Messiah that comes in there this time around, and now Prey may be the next target. Oh, PDD, you stop. Look around! Insect has found you! Has his passive bounce. available! The passive is up! And now let's bounce on Insect! He tries to get away! Takes the Dark Passage once again from Mad Life and walks away! Wow, what a game! Are you kidding me? I think that was a one for one. It was, they were fighting for about 45 seconds. Such execution. But after that, look at the gold lead, D-Man. It's almost 6,000 right now. So Korea, despite the hectic stuff of this game, must realize they're getting quite a big lead here. You see Ambition, oh, he backed away just in the right time there. I thought maybe Wei Zhao and Troll might find him, but wow, what a game. Definitely going for it now. And like you mentioned, I think China realized the situation they're in. Like, we have to create something. We can't afford to let this middle turret go. Mad Life hooking on the minions. It looks like he's going to say, well, I'll take a few just before Shy gets here. May as well. They're going to be going to nothing. And I got to point out the 173 farm that Ambition has on Twisted Fate over Messiah. That is a monstrous advantage. I think some of that had to do with the AD carrying support coming mid lane and actually relegating Messiah a bit to a side lane later on in the game, and that's one of the reasons Ambition's getting up there, but that first pick, Twisted Fate, is actually paying off right now. Paranoia's not available, but Messiah doesn't care. He goes in on towards in second. Well, puts a, takes a chunk of damage from Ambition for the pleasure. That turret, though, in that mid lane is incredibly no doubt, low now, and it's Insect actually coming around, putting that ward down in preparation for that tower to fall. They know the blue buff is actually going to be up soon. And the turret's so close to falling that LPO cannot be safe in here. It is going to be Insect. There's the turret. Troll's in trouble. He gets caught out. But Insect may well go down in the process. Yes, it is. It's a one for one. But the turret goes to Korea. And Wei Zhao was the one that picked up the kill. That's going to be Messiah getting caught out. He gets stunned up. Ambition comes in. And Shy picks up the double kill. 
just gifting the kill there to Shy at the end because Ambition had done such a good job chasing Masai through the jungle. China should not have been waiting at that sliver turret because the flank was there and they are quite far behind. They are very far behind now in Korea. Not needing the minions here, keeping the pressure straight on that turret, getting some hits in it. Here comes the conga line of minions and his PDD. He's charging up. He's thinking of going for this one. Elastic Slingshot bounces in there, but straight into the play of Madlife. And that forces him back. Now Madlife puts the hook down. PDD is going to get dropped. Look at that. He gets the passive straight away. Can they clear out the passive? Or will trying to be able to defend that they will? But you can see Ambition. He wants it. He's going to throw the wild card through. Not going to be enough. Paranoid comes out from Troll. He's going to chase in there. He will get the fearless. Ace in the hole lands out for his coming down. There. Is it enough? Stun card comes in. That's going to be a shock blast from range. And Ambition walks away for the safety. Woo. So he got a little bit greedy trying to finish off all the Bloblets. And Troll tried to punish him for it. But in the end, that cost China again more than it cost in Korea. And they continue to press this lead. Big, big difference. Where is Messiah going? He's going Bench. to the top patrol. Ambition, sorry, hadn't finished him off there. I'm so used to seeing Twisted Fate Messiah. I just got completely excited. But it is Insect. He's looking for the kill here. He's sniffing around. Flans on Wei Zhao, forces him away. He could take his pick here. But then again, China could turn around on him. I feel like that Twisted Fate ultimate served a dual purpose because it seems rather foolish to try to use that TF ult just to kill Troll since he could spell shield your gold card. But he was also giving Insect Vision to maybe try to pick up another kill. Because China was safely enough away and in their turrets, that didn't happen, but it was that dual purpose Twisted Fate ult. Look at the pressure that Insect is keeping on Messiah here. Keeps coming in, poking around that. It's going to be Messiah that goes in, goes aggressive, but they're still keeping on that blue buff. And he's just going to safeguard straight away to Mad Life. Doesn't he need the Dark Passage? That was rude. That was rude. <laughs> there was nothing that Messiah could do to actually get that blue buff. Complete safety by Insect and Mad Life. Really just toying with Messiah on that blue. They are having fun, it seems here. The Korean LCL team, Messiah clears out the wave. Let's have a look across the minion waves and the items. And that lead that's building up between Wei Zhao and Prey is pretty huge. It's just shy of 50 minions, or just over 50 minions. But more importantly, as you pointed out, Ambition versus Messiah. That swings completely the opposite direction. In gold yeah. terms, it is nearly 4,000 now. And it's 4,000 for the mid laners, but it's still even for Prey and Wei Zhao, which is why they're completely okay having the Tristana here as really safety. Because they've won the early game and mid game thanks to the Lee Sin and the Twisted Fate. And if it gets to late game, then Prey's going to be able to take off because he's sticking solid with Wei Zhao despite getting punished early game. Well, and of course, you've got, to, you've got to take into account, obviously, the Twisted Fate passive that it gives you. So you're going to be gaining gold everything you do, every little bit of Absolutely. time. 21 minutes into the game, it's got to be around about 1,000 plus already just from that passive. Yeah, I mean, quick math, that's about six, close to 600 minion kills. So an easy 1,200 gold just taken because of Twisted Fate. One of the underestimated facts of Twisted Fate sometimes, not only does he get global presence, he just gives people money. So he gives everybody the money. It's a personal piggy bank right there. But as it is, Shy is going up the top. He's completely dominating that lane. He was having, putting the pressure all over PDD. And PDD is simply being reactive the whole time. He's not been the monster that we've seen throughout this tournament so far. It looks like his last exchange clock will get charged up, if only I could say the word. And he does manage to clear out the way. But well, they may be in trouble here. And the even more dangerous thing is Shy is pretty much at a perfect point for his item build. Mermana Transform with the Brutalizer and the Last Whisper. Well stacking armor penetration and Korea has no qualms about turret diving and finishing games early. Ooh. Xiao Xiao taking a big hit from the Shock Blast. You see Insect landing that Q once again on PDD. And I think it's safe to say the best Lee Sin player in the world right now, as has been proven between the two. Wei Zhao there, just getting taken low. And again, the Q lands. It's Wei Zhao, he wants to get it on though. You can see the pressure continuing to be put down by Shai and the Korean team setting up for this one. Messiah and Ambition in the mid lane. They keep holding off that lane against each other. And Korea's really just trying to find a window here. They have the jungle in between the two lanes completely literally with wards thanks to insect sight stone and mad life's ruby sight stone when they find a window they might go or they're just keeping lpl scared and making sure they can't get snuck up on kept the pressure down insect does manage to finally get in there looking to get on wei zhao and look at that ambition kept the pressure on continuing they do manage to go in towards we messiah there as well putting the damage down but that's another two turrets picked up and the gold lead now is nine thousand five turrets to one as well this is actually the turret number that happened in the north american game when I was sitting up with Joe on the couch and we said, yeah, this game is probably over at this point because it's so hard to come back from this 10,000 gold lead this early on into the game. Korea's just going to continue to let it grow and as long as they don't make a mistake, I think they have this one.
I do think they have it. We do see Prey heading down the bottom. He's going to keep that giant wave pushing along the bottom. The bottom inner turret is the only one standing now. So that almost certainly will be Korea's next target. But they are starting to go back and build some more items. We do see the Rabidon's Death Cap, Abyssal Scepter on Ambition already in comparison. Messiah, well, look at it. He's only got that Abyssal Scepter and Sorcerer's Boots, and he is missing a complete item. And that is the big difference in the gold. And it's not like he's missing a little tiny item. He's missing a Rabadon's Death Cap, the second, I think, the second most expensive ability power item in the game. That's actually wrong. But it's a very expensive power item. It's super expensive, is the big thing to note here. Not a good sign. We've seen so many different Twisted Fate builds coming out. We've seen Lich Bane rushes. We've seen just Zhonya's Hourglass rushes. But because he was leaning against a, Di a Diana, Abyssal Scepter to make sure he didn't get spiked out, and because they're so far ahead, he decided to go for that Death Cap so he can just destroy someone in the combo. And in terms of the supports as well, we're also seeing a bit of a difference. They've both got the Ruby Soul Stone, but you can see the Philo Stones, but there is a Boots of Mobility compared to no Boots at all. And I think a lot of that also just has to do with the general gold advantage. Lulu would love to have Boots of Mobility, yeah. so she could run in and just snare people with Glitter Lance, but there's no luxury, and the Ruby Sight Stone is much more of a necessity than Boots of Mobility. And then, and then in terms of junglers, you can see it's actually more of a support from Insect. He's going for that Runic Bulwark, and he's going to have the Runic Bulwark very soon, of course. Also went for that side Stone, a pretty expensive item in itself. And we knew coming into this that someone on the Korean team was going to have to make sacrifices as far as to make this team work, and so far it's been Insect. Oh my god, oh, Shy from god. range just pokes down and drops where Zhao Zhao, where he stands, and that is the third inner turret now down. And some of that has to do with the sacrifice that Insect has put in. As he goes in, might try to start this fight. He's just having fun with his jungle gym right now. You can see. <laughs> just safeguards. He's got that dark pass. He's just like, I'm just going to bounce around the map and keep the cameraman on his toes. The pressure now being put on towards this inhibitor turret. And it's because of the 74 mini kills on Insect that those shock blasts are killing and that Ambition has so many mini kills. Insect is a support role right now. He is an initiator who will go in kick someone back, and that is his job. They have enough late game awesomeness on their team that they don't need him to scale up. So all he's doing is building tank utility and making fights happen. And because of the difference between the two AP players, the mid lane is Ambition and Messiah, we're seeing Ambition continuing to keep split pushing, keep that pressure on the mid line, and simply put, Messiah can't beat him pound for pound right now. They can't fight any of them pound for pound, which is why we're actually seeing this kind of triple push, because they know Korea does wherever they go, no one on China is going to be able to duel them. China will have to force a fight at some point. Maybe it'll be now. Well, PDD goes in and takes a chunk of damage. It's not quite all the abilities they were hoping for. Paranoia does get used, but he is going to be suicidal if he goes in on that one and chooses wisely to back away. But nevertheless, that's an ulti burn. And it's a... Okay, just the one ulti burn as well as Messiah's will be on cooldown. I have to give credit where it's due to Mad Life here. Every time Diana is ulting in, he is starting a play and it's actually preventing the damage from applying on that Diana ult because she never connects with her target. And there's going to be the middle turret going down. It's PDD, they're going to target on. They throw out the wild cards and the stuns. Messiah goes in on Insect, forces him away. But Wei Zhao and Zhao Zhao had already backed away from that turret. They may well get a second inhibitor turret from this one. They choose to back away. They haven't taken the inhibitor down, but it doesn't matter. Two completely exposed inhibitors, that is disastrous for China. They need to do something really drastic and very quickly. I'd have to say every play that China will make for the rest of this game is going to be low percentage. So they're hoping right now that Korea tries to go for Baron or that they backed in different situations from each other. Insect is a little greedy sticking around. This might be LPL's small chance. Well, we see Troll going in, but he ha. immediately gets ulti kicked straight away. And Wei Zhao and Zhao Zhao, they can't chase this one up. Only single boots for Zhao Zhao. He's not going to be able to chase it down. But Mad Life is there. He thought about maybe closing the gap. He had the Oracle ready. He wanted to clear out the wards, but Insect kind of led the Chinese team straight to it. Yeah, Insect had so many free ways of getting back in that one, and that's one of the reasons I think China didn't overchase. He still actually had two charges on his Scythe Stone, so we could have war jumped if things actually would have went badly. So, total safety, even though it looked a little greedy. It looked a little greedy, but look at the damage items, the difference. Shy compared to PDD. PDD has had to go complete tank. He had that Sunfire Gate built a while ago, but really is struggling to build out anything else because all of China are having to clump up as a unit to defend. And Shy, meanwhile, well, he's a farming machine right now. Black Cleaver, Last Whisper, and the Mura Man have completed. Well, it's, it's not even a close fight. Scary. It's, it's just a little bit scary. Prey is also starting to reach that late game Tristana, so the insurance... The insurance is paying out, even though they didn't need it. So they're just rolling in money right now. Absolutely rolling in it. Wei Zhao being a long way up lane here, to, to be fair, with that many exposed 
items. He really hasn't got a great ward coverage in that jungle either, but the rest of the Chinese team were lingering around there, sort of all as a complete protective unit. And Korea is continuing the triple push. They're not trying to do a Baron because they realize that might be a situation where they lose the game. They'd rather skirmish around the three inhibitors, whittle them down, get the inhibitors down, and just win the slow and steady way. And they've got a creep wave coming in. Remember, it's just about two shots left on that turret. They're oh, not they might fight here. In one. It is going to be one shot. Prague makes just one more. We'll finish it off. There goes the turret. Two down, and there's going to be the shot class once again on Wei Zhao, and it is doing chunks of damage to him. And they're showing Korea is a surprising amount of restraint because they might have twisted fit off it in LPL trying to make a play. They're diving on towards Ambition. The Paranoia comes out. They do manage to get on towards him, as does Messiah. There's going to be the wild growth, but it is simply put, not enough. And Korea, as a full strength unit, now move in. There's going to be Messiah surely getting dropped down. He'll go down. PDD, he's bouncing around the team, but the rest of them have had to back off. The passive comes out. That is going to be PDD over and done with. And that may well be close to the game for Korea. Another last ditch effort by China. You cannot fault them for going in on that, but they lose their two biggest damage dealers. Wei Zhao, the only person who does damage to escape this. All five are up for Korea. They may try to push this one through without super minions. Oh, we see that it's going to be the second inhibitor down. Looks like they may back away from this one. But Korea are playing it safe, and why not? The game is in the palm of their hands. They have no reason to risk it and go for the game. And especially with the Oracles on Mad Life, while running this way back through the Baron Pit, they can not only check to see if they got seen running toward the Baron Pit, they can check in the Baron Pit, which is what they're going to see right now. <laughs> they realize LPL doesn't have the capacity of stopping this one as Troll has no ultimate up. Well, I believe it was called the freight train move there, as over all the four members go over the wall and take the Baron. I never understood why a freight train jumps over walls. I, I don't know what walls a freight train can jump over. Maybe, maybe it should be called something different. Maybe. But it worked anyway, nevertheless. And it is Korea that are stomping their way through this one. It is 8,000 gold lead, and more importantly, it's 8 1 in turrets and 2 inhibitors currently down. So, what do China have to do to turn it around in the next match? China's got to do a lot of thinking, and I think one of the big things is find a way to punish more early. Since they picked a very early game composition and then lost it, Insect had a huge amount of pressure, I think. North America may have had a figured one. They were banning out Lee Sin. There's so much to try to take out against this against these teams, but Insects Lee Sin, I feel, was the MVP for the Korean team in their first round, and it may even be it to this game, even though he's only on 77 mini kills. Ooh, Insect trying to get on towards Wei Xiao, and the shot blast catches on. It takes him down to half health. And as you mentioned, you know, the fact that the turret went down first, it was Korea that actually used effectively a Chinese tactic. Oh my god, Insect is going deep on this one. It's going to be... Well, Ambition will join him. No, it doesn't matter because the surrender has come out. And wow, would you believe it? A strong, strong, dominant performance from Korea in game one there. They just looked unstoppable. And it looked like Insect had lost his mind a little bit there at the end. And I was actually <laughs> ready to go with it. It's like he saw...